So as I mentioned, this is a campus environment for a manufacturing uh, facility. Uh, what you see is a container yard that has multiple containers served by a Wi-Fi uh, network for the outdoor environment and then a warehouse or distribution center uh, with a number of uh, conveyor belts, storage material, as well as uh, large trucks bringing in and taking away material for that warehouse. And so let's just look at this in a 3D view. Uh, so to give you some uh, awareness of what this it challenges of designing for a venue like this. So you have these metal containers that are spread throughout the uh, container yard at multiple heights and with Wi-Fi APs and antennas mounted on poles to serve that area as you manage the, uh, the, the product that is being distributed there. And then for the warehouse environment, you see multiple shelving as well as, well as conveyor belts and back offices for uh, admin as well as operational needs. So with those challenges taken into account as well as those um, large trucks bringing in uh, and taking away material for that uh, warehouse, the challenge is going to be at, being able to accurately design a network that will not only serve the indoor, but also account for any outdoor impact from that Wi-Fi network. So let's zoom in to that in-building portion, and we'll focus on the in-building portion for the remainder of our time. So one of the things that uh, Dean talked about was the uh, layering of technologies and being able to manage that. If we go into our project properties, and wireless services, you'll see the different technologies that have been incorporated in this design, not only the 5G new radio for the uh, CBRS coverage and 3.5 gigahertz, but also the Wi-Fi uh, for this venue as well, taking into account six gigahertz, five gigahertz, uh, I believe we've got some 2.4 and including the outdoor network as well. So the challenges of all of those different networks uh, serving this campus uh, have to be taken into account as you create the most accurate design for that venue. Uh, one of the things that I would like to mention here before we go any further is our propagation model used for this is um, takes into account uh, its fast rate tracing. It takes into account not only line of sight but non-line of sight as well as uh, diffractions and refractions. All those need to be taken into account to provide an accurate design for your venue. So as we uh, quickly look at the coverage from our Wi-Fi network and the number of AP serving the venue, and we'll focus mainly on the uh, uh, warehouse floor, you'll see the coverage is uh, serving this area. And let's zoom out just a little bit so I can bring in, there it is, my legend. And so designing for a Wi-Fi network, your target RSSI is going to be NIC 65. And as you can see, the floor of the warehouse is uh, thoroughly covered. But when it comes to um, CBRS, that LTE and, and 5G service, you won't need as many small cells as you do APs to serve the same area to meet those target KPIs and thresholds. So as I scroll up to pull in my 3.5, we'll see the signal strength for that same area, but NEG85 is the target signal strength for LTE and 5G for uh, the same service area. But we don't want to use uh, signal strength or RSSI for our target signal. We want to use RSRP would be the equivalent for that coverage. And so you see that the floor of the venue serve with uh, almost a third of the same uh, small cells serving the same area still captures the coverage required. So the, going forward, and I wanna make sure I leave time for questions, uh, we'll jump right into the uh, maximum achievable data rate. So for maximum achievable data rate for that 5G gigahertz service for Wi-Fi, you see it tops out at 123 megahertz at 88% of the venue. But if we look at 
match for this the same area, uh, you see the maximum tubal data rate is 192 megahertz, but you see not only the adequate coverage among the floor and being able to add um, small cells will be a whole lot easier to deploy uh, because you don't need as many and it, it covers further uh, than you would with an AP in the same venue. So the challenge is that uh, you have in many warehouse facilities uh, that uh, you may not have in other office type areas is because you may have handheld scanners that operate on 2.4 gigahertz and are not capable of uh, taking advantage of the newer technology. But with automated equipment serving the same facility, uh, you would want to take advantage of the higher throughput as well as the lower latency that Dean uh, talked about so, uh, so in, in such detail in his presentation are requirements for that same area. And one of the things I do want to mention is in upcoming releases, uh, upcoming release, you, we will allow you to take advantage of our automatic placement solution that uh, helps you with automatic uh, not only AP placement but also small cell placement and we will have in the upcoming release uh, faster prediction times and we're excited about that you'll be hearing more about that in the coming days and as well as the ability to uh, manage the parameters for not only FR1 which is uh, that frequency range for sub 6 gigahertz but also FR2 for millimeter wave 